Good morning children. Today we are going to discuss about chemical effects of electric current. Chemical effects of electric current. So about electric current we are studying. So in the lesson electric current, electricity. So we have uh, studied about conductors, good conductors, poor conductors and insulators. That is the property of the material through which whether the electricity can pass or not. Certain things were discussed. So here we are studying the chemical effects of electric current. So what are the chemical effects that we can produce out of this electric current? Before we see that the chemical effects, let us understand the properties of the materials and the relation with the electricity. So certain materials, they are the good conductors of electricity. In lower classes you have seen metals are good conductors of electricity. There are certain materials like wood and plastic. They are poor conductors, bad conductors of electricity. They cannot conduct. So that is the reason they are used as an insulator for uh, electricity to protect against the electric shock. So likewise, we discussed about the conduction, the conducting nature of solids. And there we verified which solid is conducting, which solid is not conducting. How we verified? We practically verified it. We have proven that. To do so, we need to have a testing equipment, a tester, which we made ourselves. To make a, such a, tes a tester, you need to have a electric bulb, a small electric bulb connected to some wire. So this wire is connected to a battery. The free end of the bulb and the free end of the battery. If the, uh, these two are joined together directly, the bulb glows because the circuit is completed. The electricity, it flows in the wire, electric wire and it makes the electric bulb to glow. So this is one of the free end of the electric bulb and this is one end of the battery. If you place any object in between these two points, if the object is a conductor, then the circuit is completed and bulb glows. If the object is not a conductor, then the bulb doesn't glow. So by this you can test it. You can bring a nail, place the nail connecting the two ends. If the bulb glows, nail is a conductor. Bring a pencil, put the pencil here, the bulb doesn't glow, pencil is not a conductor. You bring some hair clip, put the hair clip here, the bulb glows, hair clip is a conductor. Put a safety pin, the bulb glows, the safety pin is a conductor. Put a matchstick here, the bulb glows, the, match, the bulb doesn't glow, the matchstick is a, not a conductor. So, you can identify the material whether it is a conductor or not conductor based on the simple tester we made here. Simple tester. To test the conduction capacity of the material which we are testing there. Now here in this particular chapter we are going to discuss about the conductivity of liquids. Electrical conductivity in liquids. So solids we tested here in the previous classes we have come to know what materials are the good conductors of electricity, what materials are poor conductors of electricity. Now let us discuss about whether liquids, can you test the liquids also whether the liquid is a good conductor of electricity or not. Yes why not we can test but how to test that what you need. Here also you need a tester like this simple tester. With this you can test whether the liquid is a conductor or not. So we have taken such a simple tester to check whether liquids conduct electricity or not. The simple tester with a little modification. Here we have taken a battery, we have taken an electric bulb and the wire to complete the circuit but this circuit is broken now, it is not connected. In the earlier case to complete the circuit we placed some solid objects See that the solid objects are touching the ends of these terminals, positive and negative terminals. So when these are touching, then the electricity is conducted. The circuit is completed and electricity flows. So we did with the help of solid objects. That we tested solid objects. Now we are going to test liquids. So now what to do? 
Here these are the free ends of the two terminals. Now we have to complete the circuit. Then take a small plastic bottle cap. Small plastic bottle cap. So in that bottle cap take some liquid. Take some lemon juice or vinegar. Right? You have taken some vinegar or lemon juice in the cup and you introduced both the ends here in the cap. See that the ends are not very touching each other. See that the ends are not very far. Say one centimeter distance, not more than that. Now you see whether the electric bulb is glowing or not. So your electric, if this liquid is conducting, then your electric bulb should glow. Right? So before you conduct this experiment, please check whether your bulb is in correct position. The bulb is not fused out. The battery is working. How can you do that? So before you do that, just directly connect the wires because of the battery, the bulb glows. Yes, your circuit is working. Everything is fine. The battery is fine. The bulb is fine. Now the ends are kept in a solution. That is the lemon juice, lemon juice or vinegar. The bulb glows. Because the vinegar or lemon juice is conducting. But here what happens, you see, sometimes the lemon juice or vinegar, even though they are conducting, they may not be able to produce that electricity, electric conduction, because their quantity is less, they are weak. So the electricity that is conducted through this liquid is not sufficient to make the bulb glow. In such cases, what to do? Sometimes the liquid we take here is a conducting liquid. But even then, the bulb doesn't glow. The reason is the bulb is fine. It, it is in good working condition. The battery is fine. It is good. Even though the bulb doesn't glow. Because the concentration of this solution, the quantity of this solution may not be sufficient to pass the electric current to the other pole, other terminal. So by that the bulb doesn't glow. In such cases, we need, to make, we need to make much more sensitive tester. This tester, it was used to test the solid objects. It was okay. Solids are better conductors compared to liquids. Here one point we notice. Solids are better conductors of electric current compared to liquids. It is proved here. Because in certain cases, even though the liquid is conducting, it may not carry the electric current from one pole to another pole. So by that the bulb doesn't glow. Where is the fault? The fault is not at the bulb. The bulb is fine. It is working. The fault is not at the battery. It is fine working. The wires are properly connected. There is no fault at all. The problem is the liquid is in less quantity, not in sufficient quantity to conduct the electricity. The liquid is not in sufficient concentration to conduct the electricity, even though the liquid is conducting. In such cases, the bulb fails to glow. So here you need to have a more sensitive tester, the tester which works with a liquid even though you take a small sample of liquid, even though you take a dilute solution. So let us see how to make such a sensitive tester.